Hello, KFOMED here, and today I'll be explaining how I scored a 512 as a completely average student. And so just a little bit about me, I don't really consider myself that smart, uh, but I do work very, very hard in college. I had to pretty much study from when I woke up to when I went to sleep um, because I did not feel like I was as smart as some of my peers that could cram the night before and still score very well. I could never do that. I had to study pretty much every single day in order to get the same scores that they had. I know this is not me being bitter or anything. It's just the fact this is the kind of person I am. And I'm sure for those that are watching, you guys and gals are probably all the same. And so this is just made with that in mind. And so my study plan consisted of eight months spanning from October of 2020 to June of 2021. And so I took my MCAT essentially after I graduated my senior year in college. So from October to January, um, I used the Berkeley Review for Chemistry and Physics. Um, I really liked the Berkeley Review, especially for chemistry and physics. I thought they did a really thorough job with the content. They had a lot of good practice problems, especially like practice problems in the back of the book. And so if you were like particularly shaky about your content base, um, you could really like do those problems. In the back of the book, there is a phase one, a phase two, and a phase three. Phase one is essentially completed right after you learn the material. Um, and so... Uh, this is these are like very base level questions um, that just test your understanding of the material. Phase two gets into a little bit harder material, um, but it's pretty much based on what you learn from that chapter. And phase three is like pretty much like like very very complicated, um, but still based on what you learn from that chapter. And so as you can see, like if you really don't know a specific like subject, such as like kinematics or maybe electromagnetism, or perhaps polarity, right? Um, the Berkeley Review will be very helpful for you because they will constantly hammer you with problems. You will never have like a shortage of problems to do. I really recommend it if you're really weak on content. And I don't think I was particularly that weak on content, but I really wanted to make sure. Like I said, I'm, I'm a kind of person that really likes to make sure of things. And um, that's just the way I studied. So I chose the Berkeley Review just because I just really wanted my content based down. Um, and I thought the Berkeley Review was very good for that. And the way I kind of went through the Berkeley Review, I pretty much went through the content. I made Anki cards about it. And I also made Anki cards about the questions I got wrong and the questions that I got right. And I, this program called Anki, um, Make sure to YouTube it or Google it if you don't know what it is. It's like Quizlet, but better. In terms of the amount of phases that I got through, um, I got through phase two, um, but I didn't really finish all of phase three because there were just some content that I was pretty comfortable on. Like organic chemistry, I didn't really struggle on that much, or I didn't really do any of the phases. Um, but it's nice because throughout your your time studying MCAT, there are going to be certain content things that you just feel like you didn't really understand. And if you didn't really understand them, there's always the Berkeley Review phase threes that you can go back to and be like, oh, okay, you know, like, I didn't really understand um, like nucleophilic attack. I can do this whole section on nucleophilic attack now. And so I think it's really great because of that. Um, yes. Um, and in terms of bio, biochemistry, I was a bio major. And so I pretty much just did the Jack Sparrow Anki deck. Um, it was very useful, um, very good refresher, but I didn't really need that much refreshing. Um, there were some things on there I didn't know as a bio major, but yeah, like, I thought it did a really good job in just summarizing um, everything you needed to know bio-wise for the bio section. And in terms of uh, psych -soch, um, I used Mr. Pankow's Anki deck for that. Um, I didn't really read like the, I think it was like the 100 page or the 300 page Khan Academy doc. It's very useful. It has a lot of good content. Um, don't get me wrong. If you have time, you should read through it. Um, but I just wanted to get it through, get it done. Like I thought... I kind of just did the Anki for Mr. Pankow. And if I didn't understand what they were saying on the Anki deck, I would go to the 300 page doc and read through it. Um, that worked for me. Um, but I think perhaps you should, if you should read through it, um, I don't know. I think to each their own, this is the way that worked for me. Um, perhaps this could be the way that could work for you, but I'm just throwing it out there. Okay. Um, so content review lasted from October to January. So after January, I did UWorld. Um, 
I thought UWorld was very, very helpful because it puts all the content together so that you can really practice what you did in content review. Um, I think UWorld is incredibly important. Um, it's worth the amount of money that it takes to buy. I think it's like 270 something. Um, but all the questions are very useful. Um, my one gripe about UWorld um, is that some of the AAMC stuff is you'll like once you do UWorld and you do the real AAMC practice test, you're going to see that like there are some questions that are eerily similar on UWorld to AAMC. So it kind of like a little bit inflates your score a bit if you really thoroughly review UWorld, um, which is the thing that is most important um, is that you have to really, really review UWorld thoroughly. Um, that's kind of the whole like thing of why you roll is so so useful because they not only give you the answer they explain everything so detailed and they explain why each question decision is wrong um and it's very 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 important that you go through each question choice and you pick out why exactly is this question is this answer correct and why are the other ones wrong um that was the whole point of you world i created so many anki cards not just based on the questions i did wrong on you world but also the questions I did right because I could learn so much from what they had on there. It is so worth the money. If you don't review UWorld, you're not you're not using it correctly. Um, and I pretty much did all the UWorld except for cars. And I'm gonna be honest, for me, this guy, I'm not the person to go through for cars help um, because uh, I did not score that well on cars. I got a 124 on cars. One thing I will note about you world is that the psych so session is very, very hard. Um, but you really do need it though, especially for someone who didn't take a, a psych so class at all. Um, this section was super hard. Um, I found it harder actually than literally the, the, the BB and the CP section. So it was very useful though. I really like the section for psych so um, and my percentages were pretty much, I think my average score was around 84%. And I'll post the specific like breakdowns of the percent correct I had. But another thing about UWorld is to not really worry about what your percentage correct is. Use it to learn, you know, because the questions are very hard, but they make the, the double AMC practice tests like way easier once you have done the UWorld questions. So don't worry about the percentage. Don't worry if you're getting like 30%, 40%. I've had, I've got those scores too before. Just like, you know, worry about what you're learning about. Because at the end of the day, that's the most important thing is what you're learning from UWorld. Um, that's what you're paying your money for. Okay, now we're going on to third party. So this was from, from March to April. And so I use Altius. I did all 10 of their practice tests. And I did it in a weird way where I split it up each section day by day. So kind of like I did all 10 chem physics sections like using 10 days so like day one I do one chem phys section and then day two I do another chem phys day three and then so in that way I was able to get through like all 10 of the practice tests um I did the same way for BB and then I also combined cars and psych -soch. um if I could really go if I could really go back though um I would have probably just only done two or three third parties um all together um and just use that time to focus on cars um because i think at some point like i love altias i love the way that they kind of emulate the the double amc fls um very well better than like princeton review or like the other like kind of test prep companies that are a lot a little bit more content based altias was a little bit more reasoning based and I think that's what you'll find really on the double AMC practice tests. And also during the real test too, is that the problems are more, you can get a lot of the answers just by reading a passage. Like this is same for chem phys. This is very true for bio, biochemistry and psych social. Like so much of the answer is about comprehending the passage. Like you would think like you need to know so much for the MCAT, but you actually don't. Um, you actually, all you really need to know is like how to comprehend the passage very fast. So the way I approached, um, pretty much every section besides cars, um, and my car strategy, I'm not going to talk about cause I did poorly on cars, um, was I pretty much read the passage as fast as possible. So, but, but also thoroughly enough that I can comprehend exactly what I'm reading. And I highlighted along the way, um, I highlighted things that I thought I would be asked about. And after that. I looked at the question. If it was a question I could not answer in five seconds or less, I moved on. 
And if it, it was a question, if I knew 100% that I can answer, I would answer that. And so pretty much I would get through an entire section with about like 25 to about like 30 incompletes. And then I'd be able to go back, take more time to read the passage again and really thoroughly try and understand what the question is asking so that, you know, I don't, I, I didn't really like, so that I can kind of approach those questions without a time limit because um, I feel like doing it passage by passage for chem phys and bio bio and psych soch, um, and just like timing the passages, like, oh, like for this five question section, I'm gonna do like seven minutes or eight minutes. It just didn't really work out for me. I kind of like the way where I read the passage very thoroughly and then I try to answer the questions as fast as I can, but also as accurately as I can. If I can't answer it accurately, I just skip it and I can come back to it, review the passage again, and then try and answer it again with more time. Um, just so that I can get the easy questions out of the way so that I can do the hard questions. And so that's how I approach Altius. And I kind of honed my ability just by doing that many, like all of those chem physics, bio, bio, psych, social ones. Um, so if you feel like like you need to practice that or if that's the way you want to practice it, Altius is a very good way to practice it. I'll post my specific um, like breakdown of my scores and everything um, in the comment section below. Um, but pretty much, I think my average for Altius ended up around being around like a 510, 511. And I scored actually around, like I scored a 512. So honestly, Altius, they say it's like a little bit deflated. It was, I guess it's a little, it was a little bit deflated. Um, I got like about like two points higher um, in all. So, you know, I say they're pretty accurate. And then, so now we go to double AMC. This went from April to like June. The order I went them in was the Q packs, the samples, the section banks, the original guide, the flashcards, and then the FLs. Um, I thought the Q packs were pretty easy, but you should definitely still do them. Um, the section banks was very, very hard, especially about Psych Soch. Um, but I would definitely do them before the double AMC FLs. Um, the original guide, um, difficulty was around the question banks and the section banks um but they had a really easy cars flash cards are super super easy but definitely still do them um and the full lengths what i did was i pretty much took a full length and i took two days to review um and how i reviewed the full lengths and how i pretty much reviewed all the full lengths really that i ever took for just like the altius like single sections or the full lengths um and all was that i pretty much um I took my time and I went through each question and I pretty much did the same thing as you world. I looked at the question, looked at the answer, and I tried to figure out why this question was, why this answer was correct and why the other ones are wrong. Very important to know why the other ones are wrong. Um, because, you know, they they might ask questions about the wrong answers. Um, and I also thought it was very important just to review thoroughly just every single question. The most important part about the FLs really was the review. Like you have to review it thoroughly, make sure you really know why the question was right and why the other ones are wrong. Um, that's why we take the FLs. And also of course for the endurance part too, right? You have to take them under time conditions. Um, you gotta make sure, yeah, definitely time conditions. Um, definitely make sure that when you take your breaks, um, I forgot specifically how much, I think it was 10 minutes and 30 minutes. Um, when you take your breaks, take it like, five to six minutes rather than like the full 10 minutes because during the actual test day you know you want to account for like that test day jitters when you're like oh my gosh like oh i like stayed overtime the only thing i didn't finish really was the cars q pack um but i honestly really should have finished the cars q pack uh i just kind of got lazy towards the end um which is why my car score really sucked that much my fl scores were a 517 a 516 a 513 and a 521. Um, and so I did better on the FLs than the actual tests. Um, that happens, you know, you can see people that do a lot better than the FLs, a lot worse than the FLs, you get your FL average. Um, you know, at the end of the day, like, it's kind of like the roll of the dice, you know, what kind of content do you get stuff that's that's like very, that plays to your strengths or plays to your weaknesses, um, you know. In the end, you know, I think you probably score around what your FL average is. Like my FL average was a 515 and I scored a 512. So that's around there, you know. So, you know, I can't really complain. Um, my regrets. 
Um, I regret not focusing hard enough on cars. Um, I During my pretty much my cars thing, I pretty much just did one Jack West in a day and I kind of like neglected it um, because I was like, oh, you know, I thought crap cars was like a crapshoot. Um, and it isn't, there's a strategy to it. I just didn't really take time to develop it and I kind of left it up to chance. My core scores ranged from like a 124 to a 128. I only got a 128 like twice. Um, and so it was kind of up in the air how I do. And on test day, I kind of just fumbled the ball. Um, but I really would have done a lot more cars. Um, there's a rhyme and reason, there's a way to get it. And I'm sure if you search like R slash MCAT or SDN MCAT, you can find a good strategy that can work for you. Definitely don't skimp on cars. That is my regret. If I didn't skimp on cars, you know, I wouldn't be so sad about my car scores. And also like, would I recommend studying eight months? Honestly, I wouldn't. Um, I think I kind of went overboard a little bit um, because the only reason I studied eight months was just that I really wanted to get through, like I wanted to get through all the TBR. I wanted to get through all of U World. I wanted to get through all 10 all TSF fills. I wanted to get through so many things. Um, but once you hit like the four to five month mark, you kind of burn out, you know, you kind of don't want to really study anymore. Um, so <laughs> I would not recommend it. Um, I, I think if you really have really severe content gaps, like, like you didn't take bio or chemistry or whatever, like maybe you, you consider studying that much. Um, but you, you burn out, you burn out by the fourth or fifth one. You just want to take it. Um, so I don't recommend doing it. Um, but to each their own, right? I mean, I got the score I got by studying eight months. I don't know how, what my score would be if I studied less than eight months. Um, so that was my guide for how I study the MCAT as a, you know, just an average, average Joe. Um, if you have any questions, please leave it down in the comments. Sorry, this video is kind of like jumbled. Um, I should have made it before, like right after my MCAT, um, but I was trying to get through my score and like my reaction to my score. Um, but yeah, um, thank you for watching this video. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, give me a subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.